Today in the news, we got some potential Intel issues for gamers and a rumored Nvidia upgrade. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with Intel. Their new 12th generation lineup of CPUs are closing in fast. According to current leaks, the announcement date is on October 27th, and thanks to MSI's little slip up, the CPUs should be available in stores on November 4th. In terms of performance, we've seen a lot of synthetic benchmarks pointing to basically amazing single core performance on the whole lineup and good to okay performance in multi-core. In gaming though, we haven't seen much. What we do know about gaming is that Alder Lake might suffer from being too, well, too new. Let me explain. Intel released a developer's guide a couple of weeks ago and in it was a tidbit about these new CPUs and DRM. As you might already know, DRM stands for Digital Rights Management, and it refers to a software that prevents piracy, and in some cases, tries to be an anti-cheat software at the same time. Now, going back to Intel, in that dev guide, the company says that the DRM software needs to be updated to support hybrid architecture, so big and little cores. Intel says that they are currently working with some providers such as the Nuvo to fix any issues, but there could still be problems. For example, if some indie developer added a canned DRM and then stopped working on that game, or if a company doesn't update a specific game anymore and it has an older DRM attached to it, well, it might not be supported on 12th gen CPUs, which have both performance and eco cores. So yeah, there's that. And digging through the same dev guide, I also found that Intel doesn't want you to use affinities for cores anymore, at least not the hard affinities. Affinities is that thing where you can tell uh, some cores to be dedicated to one task while others work on something else. That's mostly understandable though, since Intel says that their scheduler on new processors are good at sending tasks to specific cores. We've seen these thread schedulers really evolve with AMD. It's going to be interesting interesting to see how this lineup of CPUs are going to age. I mean, even Intel says that you can just let the CPU do everything on its own, and that's considered a good scenario, or they explicitly tell you to split the workloads between big and small cores as the best scenario for developers. Since AMD doesn't have that problem because, well, all the cores are the same, I don't think most developers are going to take the time to change their software to play well with Intel's strategy. That that's unless AMD pours, you know, a lot of cash into R&D for those companies. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, we all know that Nvidia has a weird lineup. I mean, performance wise, it scales well, but memory wise, it's all over the place. The 3060, for example, has an insane amount, which allows it to play nice with huge texture packs. We saw that with Far Cry 6, but the 3060 Ti and 3070 both have eight gigabytes of memory. The cherry on top of that is that the memory runs faster on the regular RTX 3060. There's also those rogue 3080 Ti with 20 gigs of VRAM in the wild, and the rumored 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, it's weird. So what does Nvidia do about it? Well, survey says they make it weirder. According to videocards.com, Nvidia is planning to slightly upgrade the RTX 3080. We're not talking about the rumored RTX uh, 3080 Super here. This would be just an upgrade to the OG card. It would feature an extra two gigabytes of GDDR6X for a total of 12 gigs. The chip would be the GA102-220 as opposed to the GA102-200 on the original 3080. These specs actually match the original leak for the RTX 3080 
that came out over a year ago. Now, we don't know if this chip will actually make it to release. That's still up in the air. But if it does make it, it is slated for a January 2022 release. That's alongside the RTX 3090 Ti, the RTX 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and of course, the souped up RTX 2060 that would have 12 gigs of VRAM. Oh, and by the way, a little update on that one. It might be an RTX 2060 Super, or at least it will use the same PCB. While it is confusing, it does mean that if we have more bin chips, we get more chips that can enter the market. Lastly, in things you don't need, Xbox is officially doing it. When they announced the Series X, the console was almost immediately memed for its fridge-like appearance. The company even sent Xbox full-sized fridges to some influencers. And then they announced that they would actually make one. And guess what? You can now pre-order the Series X fridge. I gotta admit, it's really tempting for me to buy one. I really don't need it, but not getting up to get my can of soda from the fridge? Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I need the steps. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click on the clickety things that are gonna pop up right here. Uh, when they pop up right here, you got a subscribe button and the latest video. Don't forget to stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.